Hello, how are you? Awkward intros. For those who don't know, about 10 to 15 years ago, I was obsessed with this idea of a Naruto game. An idea that I sort of explain in very broad strokes in a video. And you guys seem to like it, and you actually want more, which blew my mind. Thank you so much for the support. This game is still never happening, by the way. Keep that in mind. I am poisoning your mind with this knowledge. This is an open-world MMORPG where you can create your own ninjas, choose your starter village, and then go out into the world. It sounds really simple when you put it like that, but we talked about a bunch of different systems back in that video. And you liked most of them, though there were two in particular that you didn't really vibe with. One thing's for certain though, everyone vibes with otakocharms.com, the online store where you can get streetwear accessories and a lot more from your favorite anime franchises. The Naruto collection is one of their biggest, so if you're a Naruto fan, make sure to browse the store and see if you like anything. Shipping is completely free worldwide, so the pricing you see is all that you pay. If you're low on cash, the under $10 section is full of Naruto accessories as well, and for you guys, Otaku Charms is offering a discount if you use promo code GLOBKU at checkout. You'll get 10% off anything you purchase. Thank you, Otaku Charms, for sponsoring another video. All right, so the first idea that I had that wasn't received very well was the idea of permadeath. In this game, your character can die and you can lose said character. This doesn't happen easily. You can go out on missions, you can fail the missions. Even if your health reaches zero, you can still be revived by your teammates or you just respawn at a hospital. This isn't the type of game where you would perma die all the time, but if an enemy player wants to kill you and they will know that they are deleting your character, then they can do it. And sometimes that's okay, sometimes that's not okay, it depends on that player's village and what that village has to say about killing other ninja. Death is a big part of Naruto. Think about the Neji moment, think about the Jiraiya moment. Heck, the whole Sasuke character is built around his family being killed. And if we have permadeath in this game, that allows for these sorts of individual stories to flourish much more naturally. Now, even after explaining this, a very common reaction was, I don't want to lose the character that I spent hours building. Building. But I think there's a misunderstanding here, because you don't lose those hours of gameplay. When your ninja dies, they will reincarnate on a new character. And sure, you go through the character creation again, but that new ninja is going to inherit some things from the ninja that got killed. Let's say you went on this big mission to protect a remote village. Bandits have been attacking this village forever, and after you protect the village from the bandits, you discover that they were raiding this village because the village itself was holding a rare jutsu scroll. As a thank you for saving them, the villagers let you use the scroll and you learn the water style water dragon jutsu. Awesome, your ninja just so happens to have the water chakra nature, which you choose when you create your own character. So this was definitely a big find for you, something you don't want to lose. But then your ninja dies. He gets killed by a rogue ninja of the sand. Thing is, you don't actually lose that discovery. Your new ninja will inherit that knowledge. After you create a new character and you get out of the academy, you'll have the water dragon jutsu from the get-go. In fact, when you're creating your new ninja, you can even choose a better chakra nature for the loadout you collected. Let's say for instance that village didn't have the water style water dragon jutsu scroll, instead the scroll taught you earth style mud wall. Well, since your chakra nature was water, maybe this new ninja will take better advantage of that if you choose the earth nature. And what that means is that after you die and reincarnate, you actually got stronger because you're able to use your jutsu a lot better. Now you shouldn't keep everything, your ninja rank should go back down to Genin, if you had any legendary weapons, forget about it, you lost those, there has to be a consequence to dying, but it's not like you're going to start the game over from scratch. And what's more, and this is the big thing about permadeath, you now have a much more richer story. Your previous ninja got killed by someone from the sand, so now as you make a new one, you already have this history behind you. Maybe now you hate the sand ninja because of that one guy. He killed you and the sand did nothing about it? Nah, I'm gonna kill every sand ninja that crosses my path. Even if I have to go rogue to do it, even if my village does not agree with my actions. Or maybe you decide to take the higher road. Maybe you decide that your goal is now to make the Kazekage recognize that this is not okay, and you want him to change policies so future ninja don't have to go through this. You already have such a unique story to tell based on a couple of events that happened. Now imagine how unique your story would be if we took everything that happened from the academy up to the moment you died into consideration. So I think this whole game concept kind of falls apart if permadeath isn't a part of it. It's just not the Naruto game everyone wants. Another concern that came up had to do with legendary weapons. So, in this game there will only be one legendary weapon of each type 
per server, which means there's only one Samehada in the world, there's only one Executioner's Blade, there's only one Sword of Xanagi, etc, etc. There are a lot of legendaries in total, but there's only one of each type per server. The problem with this concept, however, is if someone catches one of these blades and they log out and never log back in. What happens then is that weapon is now stuck on someone's inventory, someone that's probably not even logging back in. To combat this, I came up with the idea of a timer, but my math on the timer wasn't very solid. Uh, this comment right here painted the picture perfectly. I would have to play at least 12 hours every single day to keep the legendary sword. If I would play only two hours every day, I would lose the legendary weapon in four days. There is a reason why you have to have a school to develop games, I guess. Ouch. That's rough but it's also fair. To be honest, I came up with the idea of the timer on the spot while recording the video. And the reason for that is it's not that important to come up with a system to detect inactive players. It is important to have such a system, but the exact details of said system, it, it's just not important right now. A group of people developing a game will come up with a way better idea than I can come up with on my own scribbling notes on a notepad. Plus, it's something that can even be balanced after the game comes out. So we're talking about a detail that's really too small to get into. We're still at the conception phase. We're still idealizing the overall mechanics. We're still on a very top level discussion. And that's why I haven't thought too much about it. Jerk. It is an important system, however, one that I had no solution to, because this would not only be implemented on legendary weapons, but also on KK Genkai, which is what I actually wanted to talk about today. Took us a long time to get here, but don't worry, the previous questions will actually come into play. It was very important to talk about reincarnation, it was very important to talk about permadeath, and the legendary weapons timer, because all of that is related to the KK Genkai. I'm about to say something that no video game developer or publisher would ever say. I don't want you to be able to choose a KK Genkai. I don't want you to be able to fulfill your dream of becoming an Uchiha. No company would tell you that because no one would buy their game. But in order to fulfill the dream of the ultimate Naruto game, this has to be a reality. KK Genkai are rare in the Naruto universe. There are a lot of them, but each individual KK Genkai is very limited. And if you allow people to choose which one they want, then they stop being special. Here's an example. A lot of people asked for Sharingan and Rinnegan to be amongst the pupils you could choose in Shinobi Striker. Personally, I'm glad they never did it, because if it was a simple option of selecting a menu item to get the Sharingan, then it's not special anymore. It, it would be everywhere. Kind of like the Sharingan ability for attack types is currently everywhere. It's a powerful ability, as it should, I mean it's the Sharingan, but if you see it in battle, you don't think, oh crap, an Uchiha! I never seen one of these. It's just another player with Sharingan, and something as important as Kekkei and Kai should never be the value to this point. If you're making the ideal Naruto game, you gotta make Kekkei and Kai matter. Now, I said I didn't want you to be able to choose a Kekkei and Kai. That doesn't mean you can't get it. First step on the Kekkei and Kai: calculate how rare each one is. Let's say 1% of the server can be Uchiha, 2% of the server can be Hyuga, 5% can have the Ice style, and so on. Now, these aren't the actual percentages before you start bitching about it in the comments, which is everyone's Kekkei Kai on YouTube is bitching about stuff. This is something that I would actually love to poke the creator's mind about. Very often in anime games, the original creator oversees and approves the project. So in an anime game as big as this, Kishimoto Masashi Sensei would definitely be an advisor. And these percentages would largely become from how rare he believes each Kekkei Kai is in the universe of Naruto. We don't have to do a one-to-one -one thing. If he thinks 0.001% are Uchiha, we can manipulate that number to make sense gameplay-wise, but how many Uchiha are there for each Hyuga, for instance? I, I would love to poke his brain about all the different clans. But the bottom line is, each one of these bloodlines should be extremely rare. You don't want to see a village full of Sharingan, you don't want to see a village full of bone people. That just takes away how special these abilities are. And if it is rare, and you find one of those ninja out in the world, it will be a story to tell. Whether you defeat them or they defeat you, it will be a special event that you'll definitely remember, because these are rare ninja. On the other hand, if you put all the Kekkei Kai together, if you sum up all those percentages, the chances of you getting one of them aren't that bad. It's only hard if you're aiming for a specific one, but if all you want is a random Kekkei Kai, I've got to say you got a pretty good chance. But how can you a simple player, get a Kekkei Kai. It's very simple. Pre-order now our ultimate edition of the game to get the Uchiha bloodline. <laughs> 
The way you get Kekegenkai in this game is the way everyone in Naruto gets Kekegenkai. You're born with it. Do you think Sasuke chose to be an Uchiha? No, he was just born that way. So when you create a character, before you even start creating your character, you may see a prompt that says, Congratulations! You've got the bone power! Do you want to keep the bone power? And you can choose to continue with that Kekegenkai or just make a regular ninja. You don't choose which one you want, you randomly get assigned one if there is space for Kekegenkai. You might not even see this menu. Because for this to happen, there can't be more bone manipulation ninjas than the percentage that we saw earlier. If that percentage is filled in the server, you won't see that prompt for the bone ninja. But there might be an opening on Hyuga, you never know. And this is where the legendary weapon timer, the inactive player thing comes into play. Because if someone gets a Kekegenkai, and they log out, never log back in. Now we have someone who's inactive filling in the spot for that Kekegenkai. When an active player could actually be enjoying playing with those abilities. So whatever method the team ends up with for detecting inactive players, if a Kekegenkai player becomes inactive, they will lose those powers becoming a regular ninja. If they ever decide to come back to the game. Which means that power is now available for any brand new ninja that might be created. It's important to keep a flow going. You create a character, you get a Kekegenkai, okay, at some point if you become inactive, it goes back into the pool. You will also lose that Kekegenkai if you die. Oh, now death is even scarier. I just lost a bunch of you. It's all part of the circle of life. You gotta allow new players to get Kekegenkai and the only way to do it is to remove it from inactive players and remove it for when someone gets killed. But if you're really scared of losing your bones, there is actually another method to becoming a Kekegenkai user. I touched on this topic last time, but uh, a marriage system would be put into place. How did Sarada become a Uchiha. Well, someone who wasn't anything special, was just a normal ninja, married Sasuke. And the daughter... <coughs> so if you manage to create an Uchiha bitch, you'll be the most popular ninja in the server. But yeah, that Uchiha bitch, if she finds someone to get together with, they'll have a kid. And when she dies, the player will then play as the kid and inherit not only the jutsu from the previous character, but also from the partner that you got together with. Which is the best of both worlds. So it's almost like a special type of reincarnation. When your ninja dies, you reincarnate with another ninja. You will lose Kekegenkai because it's a different ninja, different bloodline. But if you actually have some someone in your bloodline, if you marry someone and have a kid, then you can keep the bloodline going, you can keep the Kekegenkai. Which is why we talked about reincarnation at the start of the video. I told you, it's all coming together, isn't it? What's more is, if you created a ninja and you didn't have any special powers, you can still have some special powers next time you die. If you manage to marry that Uchiha bitch, then your next character might have the Sharingan. Just keep in mind that if you log out for a very long time, you'll lose those powers along with any legendary weapons you have in your inventory. Today's topic was Kekegenkai and and it's a topic that I chose together with Ian Rinnigan, who edits a lot of videos here on the channel, because I honestly did not expect so many of you to want a part two to that video. That video got 5,000 likes without me even asking for likes, so if you want a part three, let's aim for 4,000 likes. I think that's fair. And the topic of the next video will be chosen by you. Just think of any question you have regarding this game and ask it in the comments. I'll look at the most popular comments and choose my topic based on that. But before I go, that comment really got in my head. So here's what I've come up in the meantime to discern active from inactive players. What's so tricky about this method is that it's not as simple as tracking how long someone's been logged off. If they've been logged off for let's say a week, you could consider them inactive, but they can also simply log in and log back out to just to reset the timer. And if they do that, I still wouldn't call them exactly active players. It's just someone logging in and logging back out to keep their legendary weapons. They're not doing anything with them. So here's the method I came up with. For each legendary weapon and for each KK Genkai, there will be a group of quests. For instance, the Samehara gets hungry. Kill 10 bandits with this weapon. Remember your Uchiha origins. Go to the secret Uchiha temple in the mountain and meditate. Each individual weapon and each individual Kekegenkai has a group of quests associated. And every week, you must complete the quest you're assigned. The game randomly pulls from the quest group of your Kekegenkai or your legendary weapon and tells you you have a week to complete this. If you have both a Kekegenkai and a legendary weapon, tough shit. You gotta do two quests every week. This way you would be playing the game once a week, which we could already consider being active. Plus, these quests would force you to get out there. Get out of the village, potentially get killed by some ninja. You can't play it safe when you're holding that much power. So there you go. I didn't go to video game school, but at least I know how to spell you dumbass. Don't forget to hit that like button, 4000 likes for the next video, and let me know which topic I should cover. And as always, thank you very much for watching. My name is Globku, and I'll see you next time. Boy.